Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to our deep dive first look at B-17 Flying Fortress Leader from Dan Burson Games. In this solitaire World War II operational and tactical level game, you lead US bomber groups over Germany on bombing campaigns in World War II. Let's jump in and take a look. This is a solitaire game designed by Dean Brown, published by Dan Burson Games. This is a second edition from 2017. And the big overview picture again is that you're leading bomber groups flying bombing missions over Germany during World War II. But there's two levels to the game. There's kind of an operational level to the game, which consists of managing your forces over campaigns that last anywhere from a month, which can be very, very short, to multiple months, which can be much longer, multiple hour campaign games. And the heart of those campaigns really is the missions which uh, each mission takes about 30 minutes, and that's basically one bombing run over Germany. So a campaign can be anywhere from like two missions to perhaps even as many as a dozen missions, which means the length of the game, if you're looking at those campaigns, is kind of an hour up to probably, you know, as long as 10 hours for some of the larger campaigns. So a lot of stuff to consider as we're looking both the operational level and tactical level games of this. Now, in addition to that, there is no one campaign that covers the entire World War II bombing campaign. So the campaigns are more operational level, consisting of a, a chunk of months of the entire bombing campaign over Germany. However, in addition to doing the campaigns, you can also add in what's called the single, single bomber variant, which means that you do your campaign, but then you're really kind of concentrating in and telling the story in addition to that of one particular bomber, trying to get your bomber to survive that campaign. Also, if you don't want to do the campaigns or the main thrust of the game, there is a mini single mini game of a single bomber where you're just concentrating on that bomber and there's no campaign element involved either. Lastly, there's a crossover um, with uh, down in flames. So if you want to handle, if you want to have down in flames handle the fighter versus fighter combat, you can play the campaign game here. And then when you have a fighter to fighter uh, incident, you resolve that in down in flames, then bring the results back to B-17 Flying Fortress and incorporate, the, incorporate them into your campaign here. So tons of stuff and detail to look at. Let's jump in now and take a look. We've got a big box, three inches with over 300 cards and over 400 counters and a lot of stuff to look at. Let's jump in and take a look at our documentation. Uh, we have two pieces. We have the B-17 uh, second edition playbook here and then the second edition rules. Now, the rules document is rather long. It's 54 pages. And I will say uh, it's very much organized, I think, in kind of a resource format where the first third or so of the manual is really kind of talking about all the units and counters and cards that are in the game. Then there's a setup set element that goes uh, following that. And then the last third of it really is kind of following the sequence of play to help guide you through the game. And I honestly, I think the best way to learn this game would be to really just start with that setup portion, maybe kind of skim through the first part, start with the setup portion, and then follow the sequence of play. And I think pretty soon you'll be kind of executing missions and, and moving along rather efficiently. Although, as we look at the rules here, they're just, there are a lot of details. There are events, Luftwaffe commanders, different multiple targets, types of planes, advancement of the kind of the skills of your crew, some optional rules here at the end as well. The last few pages have some optional rules here to include like target intelligence and weather and veteran and novice bandits and things. So a lot of depth in here. And that why it makes me, that makes me think kind of the final result. If I were to give this a complexity rating, I'm gonna go with a four out of 10. Nothing is very complicated with the rules, but there are a lot of procedural elements that you're going to be following, following through both at the, the monthly level to organize your campaign, kind of campaigns, the overview of your large campaign, and then executing a mission as well. So I think there's a, a good bit of details to pay attention to as you go through. And all of these details, I think, really add a lot of color to the game that are really gonna bring the narrative of your particular campaign to life. And with a, just a tremendous amount of variety as we look at kind of some of the other elements in the game as we go forward, I think you'll find that no two campaigns are gonna ever play out the same. So that is our longer rule book here. We also 
also have a playbook, and the playbook really consists mainly of an extended kind of sample mission that walks you through kind of the planning and then the execution of your mission. And I found this really helpful as I was kind of looking through the rules to get an understanding for how uh, gameplay works. And then the playbook also contains that single bomber variant. So you're playing the campaign and you're folding in the story of one particular bomber. You can name your crews and all this kind of stuff. And it kind of adds an element of kind of personal interaction with the campaign that looks like it would be a really fun thing to do. And then here we have the B-17 mini bomber gam game, which is just the f story of your bomber in particular missions. So this will play, you know, missions are probably gonna play pretty fast and you can fly through those. And then lastly in here, in the back half of this 20 page document, we have the Down in Flames crossover that talks about how you can integrate Down in Flames action to kind of fold back into the results of your fighter versus fighter combat in B-17 leader. So a lot of, it looks like there's been a lot of thought put into this one and a lot of attention to really kind of bringing out some amazing narratives as well as you know some of the decision making both I think in particular at that operational level. So lots of thought. I really kind of like the, the the general impressions I'm getting from this. And the rule books look well organized and look pretty clean and the rules look pretty uh, pretty good to understand too. Let's jump in now and take a look at our counters. Uh, there are six counter sheets here. I mean, the first one is a smaller one here where these are your B-17 Flying Fortress leaders. Now, uh, these are unique leaders that you can spend your kind of operational points on to kind of upgrade the skills of particular bomber groups. So this is a way that you can kind of make your bomber groups a little bit more unique. And I think as we look through a lot of these things, we'll see that that's really where <laughs> the, the element of game, I think, that, that really shines with this is they've really thought of a lot of details to bring in almost like an RPG element to this each bomber group's going to have its own story and you can level up their skills and things like that. Um, the, the events are going to play out differently and all of these elements to kind of just tell the story of your particular campaign looks like it's going to be a really cool element of this. Then we have uh, five counter sheets. Uh, these are five eighths of an inch all pre-rounded and we're looking here, they're all double sided too. So there's a reduced side here on the back for these two. And we're looking here basically now we see the US bomber groups here. And again, these, are, these represent groups of bombers, not in individual bombers. And then we've got the escorts, the fighters here as well, because you're going to have fighters. These as well level up with skills as they gain experience and missions. Again, tapping into that whole idea of the role-playing element behind this game. Down here, these are the damage markers as you suffer damage to your bomber groups from enemy uh, flak and enemy bandits coming to shoot you down. And then as we get to the bottom down here, we start to look at the bombing damage markers. A lot of these are tokens that you're going to be dropping on the cards to represent the changing status of the cards. Up in here, this is the sheet number two, starts to get at the, the German bandits, Focke-Wulf 190s and uh, BF 109s. Uh, and these you're gonna be oftentimes pulling out of a cup to get a sense for enemy activity from a particular uh, squadron here. And these you're gonna be dropping down on the map. These are the Luftwaffe squadrons for the active squadrons for your particular missions. There is also an element here we can see supply. So uh, the results of your bombing missions can reduce the aircraft, produ aircraft production capacity of Germany to the point where you may see more or fewer bandits coming at you in subsequent missions depending on how well you do in those. So a lot of things kind of really thought out I think in this one to make it a, a lot of fun. Now here we have, uh, these are U-boat pens I believe with the different types of targets that we've got. Here we've got abilities that can be added on to certain tactical things to certain leaders and certain cards that are going to improve their performance. Down here we have all different bomb types and again you're going to be paying to load out your aircraft with different types of bombs depending upon the missions and what you think is the right way to go. So again you've got you know, one of the things to talk about a lot with the with these types of solitaire games where you're con you know controlling bomber groups or individual planes or individual vehicles and things like that is, you know, how much does the game feel like it's on rails and how much does it feel like you're influencing the outcome of the events? I feel like there's a lot of choices in particular with this one at the operational level. I'm, I'm not so sure about the tactical, the mission level, what's going to be the choice elements in there. But I do think that at that operational level, you're really going to have a lot of uh, options and choices for how you build up and what, how you allocate forces to particular bombing runs and things like that. A lot more markers in here. 
Again, you can knock out aircraft fac factories and they're going to get rebuilt. There's also an element of, we see theater markers here. There's an element for a USSR campaign and the Mediterranean campaign that folds into play as well, diverting German bombers and elements like that too. Uh, more counters down in here. These are basically some of the targets for a particular campaign in here. And then lastly, on sheet five of five, we get some more bombing markers. The, the enemy can upgrade its skills and improve its technology in the course of a campaign as well. So not only can you improve your technology, you know, minor increments, of course, in this type of scope and scale, but the, the Germans could improve it as well. <laughs> so you may see, you know, the, the enemy changing, the enemy forces changing over the course of a campaign. Down here, these are the markers for that down in flames uh, crossover as well for the counters you'd be using that for. So a nice big counter set. Everything looks good, nice and clean. A lot of them, again, are informational markers that you're going to be placing down on the cards and on the map to kind of help uh, maintain and kind of organize gameplay. But on the whole, looks like a very functional counter counter set. Let's jump in now and take a look at our campaign cards and player aids. So there are 11 of these campaign cards. They're single-sided and they really start to spell out the different types of campaigns that you can have here. Um, they, they don't list them by difficulty, although I, I get a sense that you'll be able to tell which ones are harder as you play the game a little bit here too. But I wanted to point out one of the shorter ones here. There's a couple that are really short. Here we go. So August 1942, short U-boat focus. And then depending upon the year, the enemy capacity and technology levels are going to be different. And you're going to be running in here. I think this is when it's, because it's only one month. It's probably like two, at the most, two missions. This gives your initial bomber groups. Then these are your operational points that you get to purchase different elements, like upgrade your groups and commanders and things like that. And here's your evaluation. The winning and victory conditions are all point-based, depending on how many targets you destroy and things like that. Um, and that you're going to basically get a result for your campaign. And here we can see a lot of things are not, you know, applicable for this very short campaign that's only one month. But if we look here, here's June, July, and August, strategic targets. This is a three-month campaign, another short one for one month. But most of them are these, like in here, Operation Point Blank, directed the 8th Air Force to destroy the Luftwaffe by targeting aircraft factories and airfields. So these are going to give you the types of targets. There's a huge range of targets that have different kind of characteristics and abilities to them as well. But this one here lasts June, July, August, uh, June, uh, June 1943 to May 1944. So this is a longer, massive campaign here with evaluation coming in great at 76. So this is a you know big one. So again, that idea that you have really kind of can pick your length of mission. You know, you could do a very short campaign that's one month to kind of get your feel for the game if you don't have a lot of time, or you could do one of these longer one that's gonna be multiple missions extending over multiple play sessions. So a lot to like, I think, with the depth and variety for the campaigns that are in the game. Now, these are, uh, this is the B-17 mini bomber game. That This is the one that sold over. If you just wanna play the story of one bomber trying to survive as many missions as possible. This is your player aid for that single-sided. And then this is the variant where you are folding in one bomber into the full campaign game. So you're adding a single bomber element to the full campaign game. So these again are all optional things you can do as you want to. This is the flying forces you're charting where you're gonna be charting the experience and promotion levels and the, the results for all the different bombing campaigns and bombing missions that you have. So this would be kind of per campaign. And then lastly, the big thing here is again, this is double-sided here, uh, but this is the sequence of play on the front side here. Um, and Again, kind of reflecting that dual nature of the game. This is the monthly sequence of play. So you're going to be determining secondary mission targets, uh, kind of upgrading and checking on the Luftwaffe defenses, checking on the defense commander, monthly, doing some monthly housekeeping. And then you come in here where your sequence of play is really the week starts. You're going to get intelligence. It's an optional rule. You're going to pick your morning briefing. This is where you kind of allocate your planes for the various missions. Then you're going to be doing mission pre-flight target bound element of the, the legs of the flight, resolving the bombing over the target, then homebound, what happens, then a mission, mission debriefing. And then within this week, you might have multiple missions. So then you would recycle and do any remaining missions that you might have that month. Then you do some end of the week cleanup, and then you go back to do the next week. So you're going to be kind of going through all of these missions and stuff like that as you as you lead your campaigns through over these multiple multiple weeks and months of their duration. So a lot of elements in there to like, I think. Let's jump in now and take a look at our map. So the map is a mounted 17 by 33 inch. Um, it's even more so, I think, kind of a design. It's not really a map, I guess. More so as kind of an organizational board 
for the levels of the game and we can kind of see it in some different levels here. I'll kind of show the blown out, the, the zoomed out version of it here. Um, but it seems very functional. So a lot of information here that you're going to be using to manage your campaign. On the right hand side, here's kind of an abbreviated sequence of play to help you figure out what to do next. And that's it. There's, you know, there is definitely, I think, something, because there's a lot of procedural elements. Each one of these segments of the game are going to have procedures and variables and things that are going to change depending upon how the campaign is evolving. And that's where I think the game is going to really have more of its complexity rather than being something that I think is challenging conceptually to grab. It's just that there's a lot of things to execute in here. Fun things too. So it's not, it's not a, it's not a criticism of the game whatsoever. I think that richness and depth and variety of the game is really what's going to bring the campaigns to life. And you kind of need that. Um, and, and with that kind of thinking, because of that, I think the game is going to have a ton of depth and replayability. Then we, here we have, you know, some of the cards are going to sit here. A big, big card element in this game is, of course, Danvers and Games. Then here we have the relatively abbreviated map. So you're going to be basically plotting your missions to various targets in here. There's going to be aircraft that are responding. And then when you get attacked by aircraft and things like German aircraft, you're going to be kind of putting them over here and then plotting out the battles as well. We've got a calendar marker up here in the top right. Uh, some more elements here for your targets and secondary targets. And then here tracking some of the bandits disrupted and aircraft factory monthly output and the supply of that that they're producing and things. So a lot of different variables that you're tracking on this, you know, game board. Map is a little bit, I mean, there's a map in the middle, of course, but map I think is a little bit of a, a misnomer in this case. It's really kind of the organizational board that you use to run your campaigns. We also get a 10 sided die for resolving a lot of the combat and other rules in the game. This well is filled with cards. I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's take a look at our cards. 336 cards. By far, I think this is the biggest part of this first look that I want to take a look at. They consist of five different types. We have three decks up here of the targets, uh, two big piles here of the bombers and fighters that you're controlling, secondary mission cards, uh, event cards, and then German leaders for Luftwaffe leaders. Let's start in by taking a look at our unit cards. So these are the cards for the bombers and the fighters that are in the game. And you'll notice here that there are, for example, let's do sad sack here. There are three cards for each bomber group. So this is the sad sack bomber group, 448th bomber group. And these cards, the different levels here represent different levels. So we can see that it starts out here at a recruit, which is level four. And then as the aircraft, the bomber group gets more experience, it's going to level up to green level five. Then we can see average level six. And each time it's bombing skills and it's statistics and it's all, all kinds of information about it is going to get better. It's going to become a more powerful uh, bomber group as it gains experience and skill at making bombing runs over Germany. Skilled seven, then it goes to uh, veteran eight, and then last but not least is this ace level where you can really kind of get the ultimate. And you can see that, you know, these numbers all here are all changing as the, the, the tactics, as the card levels up and skills. And all of these cards in here have that element. So every bomber group or fighter group has six different levels to it. Again, getting at that, this idea that you know, it's really kind of, it's a role playing type of experience where you're going to be adding in experience and bombing targets. Successful runs are going to give them uh, more experience. And with this, of course, too, I imagine these multiple levels of aircraft are going to be coming to play more in the longer campaigns rather than the shorter campaigns because you know it's going to take multiple months to level these up. So if you're just playing one of the shorter campaigns, probably the experience levels aren't going to change uh, quite so much as with some of the other longer campaigns in here. So I've got some targets mixed in here. Then I want to show too as well, we have a variety of uh, fighters here. Here we get a B-26 and a variety of bombers too. B-26Bs, B-24s, B-25Cs, some varieties on the B-17. And here we get into the fighter groups. So we've got some Spitfighters, Spitfires that are here. Uh, then we have uh, Thunderbolts. We've got Mustangs I know are in here too. Lightnings, P-38s. And then uh, Mustangs are here too, P-51s. And then there is the uh, Shooting Star Bomber, the jet variant here as well. There's only one of them, so I assume it doesn't play a big role in, in most, especially the early campaigns, not at all. But yeah, those are our, our cards here. A lot of information on them, really fun to look through. And I think, again, I'm a huge fan of role-playing elements in games. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really like the Leader series, is they tend to tap into that, that element of gameplay that I really, really like. Now, we also have here a, a big stacks of bombing targets. And these are organized by type. For example, aircraft factory uh, 
targets. Um, a lot of them here are that. That's a big one. Airfield target. We can see as well, most of these are that, these two categories, ball bearing factory target. And a lot of these other ones are very different. And then within that, you pick out as you're, you know, getting your missions and depending on the campaign, different types of targets are going to be involved. We might get U-boat pens here, U-boat port, ball bearing factories coming in here, airfields, airfields, and all of these are relatively different too. These are not identical. So, you know, bombing a bombing run over one airfield could be completely different than a bombing run over another airfield. Some are going to range in difficulty, range in terms of what uh, different things are going to happen, number of aircraft, where it's located, all these kinds of things are going to create an cr incredible variety variety of mission types because you're going to be basically picking from these cards to get your targets for particular uh, bombing missions. And here we can see aircraft factories, uh, vehicle factories, oil storage, oil refineries, We've got other elements in V-weapon sites, uh, marshalling yards for railroads, railroad bridges. And so, and again, these targets are going to vary on the campaign. You know, you might have a campaign that's doing more uh, you know, aircraft, uh, airfield and aircraft bombing over Germany. You might have one that's helping the, the, the allied invasions in Normandy and stuff like that. So all of these missions and cards are going to kind of interplay, giving a lot of those 11 campaigns very, I think, distinct and unique feels to them. Naval ports as well, special weapon aircraft factory. So a lot of fun. Just look at the, each one of these. Again, uh, you know, you don't just have one type of aircraft reactor. You've got dozens in here. In addition to your main missions and stuff, um, a lot of the campaigns have what are called secondary missions. And I'm not quite sure yet how these fold into the activity, but these look like, I think, success secondary missions that you can do. Like, for example, draw three U-boat targets to destroy U-001 to U-06, destroy at least seven U-boat, seven U-boat VP. I think these are optional missions that you can try to do to push for. Again, kind of a push your luck element to the game. You're trying to add these in to do better in your campaign. ETO, uh, European Theater of Operations, tactical missions and things like that. So again, more missions, more variety, more things to pick from. Lastly, on the uh, outbound and then inbound part of your missions, you're going to be drawing event cards. Some of these are bad and some of these are could actually help you. The top half here is for your outbound and then the, the return run down here, the bottom half is what you pick it. So we can see uh, designate one group as being fast for the homebound flight. So that's good. You know, fighter miscommunications, fighter escort cannot meet up with bombers. Remove fighter group from the mission. That's bad. <laughs> That's like very, very bad. Tailwind. Increase the range of fighter groups by two. That's helpful. So you can keep your fighters with you for a longer period of time. So just a lot of things that can really kind of change the flair, the nature and element of each mission and campaign. And that's, I think, again, that element of, uh, it's kind of beating a, a, the drum here a little bit, but I feel like there's a ton of variety. I feel like every campaign is going to play out differently. And that's one of the things I think I really enjoy about the leader series is that it's great at spinning narrative. And then with the campaign element in particular, you've got a lot of choices as to um, how you're going to kind of manage and, and be successful with your bomber groups here. These are the German commanders. So the, the campaigns that you're going to have, the German resistance is going to have commanders with different abilities and levels of aggressiveness and things like that. So you could have a commander that is just a complete thorn to try to be able to work against. And you could have others that are going to be less aggressive or less skilled. So again, with the idea that Campaigns are going to play out differently all the time. You know, getting one commander and get, as opposed to another commander could completely change the nature of the campaign. I think this is a really neat touch. And again, as I mentioned earlier, German forces are going to be leveling up their technology, trying to build planes and stuff like that, and trying to build more forces too. So that nature of it's a, a you know kind of a shifting and vibrant opponent uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty strong element of these as well. There we have it: 336 cards in the box. And there we have it, B-17 Flying Fortress Leader from DVG. If you are interested in other games of a similar nature, I'm going to point you to our first look video at the 8th Air Force and 20th Air Force, which are full war campaigns over either Japan or Europe produced by Fortress Games. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.